A lot of people think as soon as you get some gimbal, you can just get crazy cool shots, but that's not always the case. In today's video, I want to show you the difference between beginner and pro gimbal shots. I'm going to show you both, and then towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you the edited versions of each one of the sequences. We're going to be shooting on the new Insta360 Flow mobile gimbal. This thing is really, really cool with some crazy features. Insta360 really thought this gimbal out with the built-in tripod, which is the only one I've seen of its type. It also has this extendable selfie stick, making it easier to get interesting angles or getting down low to the ground. You can easily swap between modes with this touch dial and you slide your finger on and swap over to the next mode. I really like this design with the see-through back compartment and you can see the chips and everything. One of the craziest features of the gimbal is this AI tracking feature. Basically, you can stand in front of it, give it a signal, it locks onto you, starts recording, and it's gonna follow you around no matter where you move. When you're done recording, you simply give it the signal again and it stops. But being able to just like snap your phone on like that is one of the coolest features. So let's get into the video and show you guys the differences. Shot one is single direction movement. A beginner might see a few different points of interest and try and get them all within that same shot. Maybe panning down from the one thing that's interesting to show an interesting view, only to move to the right and show a different section of the beach. This makes the clip feel all over the place and like someone is kind of just moving their hand around filming whatever they see that is in front of them. The pro will keep one consistent movement throughout that clip. If it's a push forward, it will be pushing forward from the beginning and still be pushing forward in the same momentum as the start of the clip. Take the extra time to set up your shot in a way that you can fit your elements of interest into that one frame without shifting the movement within that clip. If you have something else you want to show, break it up into a separate shot of itself. Shot two is introduce foreground. A beginner might see something that they want to film, whip out the camera and start getting Getting the shot. Let's take this push forward for example. It's an okay shot and it can definitely work, but let's take a little look at the pro version. Now, from almost the exact same place on the beach, we found these rocks introducing foreground and it gives a whole nother perspective on our shot. We've now introduced a third element and makes our shot feel a lot deeper, as well as when we have that push forward, these foreground elements really accentuate the movement, showing that camera pushing forward without having to cover as much ground. It is by far one of the easiest ways to turn an okay shot into a significantly more interesting one. Shot three is change your perspective. I see it far too often that beginners just take out their camera and start filming at eye level of what they see in front of them. The problem with this is that we see at eye level all day of our lives and it's quite a boring perspective. The Pro on the other hand will get creative, maybe by extending the Insta360 flow to get a nice high perspective or just moving around from that eye level to show all different aspects of your surrounding environment. Shot four is slide over pan. It's way too easy to whip out that camera starting from one side and pan it all around to the other side to show that viewer the entire place that you are. Unfortunately, the problem with this is it's very hard to keep a consistent movement and it often just looks exactly like that. Someone taking out their camera and moving it from one side to the other to show where you are. Ideally, like the pro, we wanna change that pan into a slide, find where your most interesting point of view is and keeping your camera pointing in the same direction get one smooth movement from side to side and it gives off a much more professional and visually pleasing look to the viewer. Shot five is get involved. Now again, when people are shooting, it's far too easy just to take out your camera and get the shot of what you want from where you are again at that eye level. Take this beginner shot, for example, we wanted of the water. It's okay and it looks cool, but let's look at the pro version and see how we can improve this shot by going that extra mile, getting in the water, getting really nice and low to the ground, getting some splashes and elements of movement in that shot, and the shots end up looking vastly different from one another, even though we're trying to show the same thing. Shot six is shoot with intention. 
it's very easy to get overstimulated by all of the different elements around you, especially if you're somewhere beautiful and trying to capture your shots. I see far too many beginners filming one thing and moving the camera over to another thing, only to move it to another thing and try and cram that all into one shot. The first problem with this is the viewer doesn't really know what you're trying to show them or where they should be looking. The other thing is it just looks like you're kind of spraying your camera all over the place. The pro is going to want to break them up and isolate individual areas. We can look at something like this rock and rather isolate it, get one thought out and plan shot of this rock in particular and then we can move on to our next point of interest and get one isolated shot of this point of interest. Shot seven is don't always walk. It's often very tempting to run around all over and walk down the beach with your gimbal because it's so smooth and going to get all the shots. You don't always want to be walking along and adding as much movement as possible just for the sake of having that gimbal. The pro might sometimes do a simple shift of weight from one side to another. In our example, we can get really nice and low, get a very controlled and smooth movement, even with some foreground in our shot, and it's gonna end up looking significantly better. Just because you have a gimbal, it doesn't mean you should be running all over the show. Those are gonna be all of the shots that we need for our two different sequences. Let's play them both back to back and see if you guys can tell the difference. Hopefully you guys would agree that the second one and the pro versions of all of the shots look way, way better. The first one is still fine. Don't feel bad if you guys are doing shots similar to this, but you can use these little tips just to improve those shots and make your mobile gimbal shots look way more professional. Remember, if you want to find out anything more about the Insta360 Flow, it's going to be linked in the top of the description. This little gimbal has some crazy cool features and it's a complete like travel little mobile gimbal. Super cool. The only one I've seen with a little built-in tripod. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.